Well, tribe, how are you guys doing today? It is Wednesday. It is technically hump day. I do not have this camera set up correctly for what we're doing here. Please forgive me. There we go. So there's a lot of different things I want to talk about today. So it's kind of going to be a smorgasbord of things, if you will. Feel free to stick around. Feel free to leave if it's a topic that you're not really interested in. This is more of a I guess shoot the shit with each other kind of conversation. Um, this morning I went to the gym, went and had brunch, had two mimosas. Technically, I'm not even gonna lie to you guys, I'm a, just a, like a teensy tiny bit tipsy maybe after two mimosas on empty stomach after the gym. So just bear with me a little bit here, but there are a lot of different things that I wanna talk about that I find interesting and I think you guys may enjoy as well. So. The first thing that I want to talk about is the fact that the Biden administration, good old Sleepy Joe, Grandpa Joe, whatever you want to call him, bless his, his I don't know, dementia. I don't know what's happening with him, but bless his heart. Um, he continues to give money to people and things and causes that do not resonate with me and probably a lot of y'all. A lot of the things that our money, our taxpayer dollars are going towards do not make sense to me. And I'm not even talking about Ukraine. I'm not talking about Israel. I'm not talking about any of that kind of stuff. I'm talking about things here inside our own borders, here in the United States of America itself. So Biden administration on Friday has allocated another, y'all, another $45 million to California programs that help migrants who have crossed the southern border. And I'm going to sound like a broken record when I say this. I'm going to rub some people the wrong way. And honestly, I could give two shits. Let me just fully be, I'm, I'm generally very transparent, but we're going to be extra transparent today. I do not care if people agree with me or not. If you do agree with me, cool. Then we're on the same page and we're like-minded. You know, if you don't agree with me, that's also fine. But I honestly don't care either way. I have a massive problem with the fact that our administration continues to give your hard-earned money, my hard-earned money to people who do not have American citizenships. And I don't know, I don't, I don't mean like, you know, outside the country, I'm, well, let me rephrase, outside the country and inside the country, both, whatever it is, giving money to states to help with illegal immigrants does not make sense to me. I can sound heartless. I, I can sound, you know, whatever y'all want to say I sound like, but it bothers me to no end that we have the record, record amount of homeless people on our streets, a record amount of drug addicted American citizens on our streets, a record amount of women and children who are in, you know, domestic abuse situations and everything else and all of the money that could go to help these people to help the areas that are low income and citizens who need help with, with a leg up. Instead, all of that money is going to people who are breaking the law to cross our borders illegally. I, I can't <laughs> listen. And I know it sounds wrong. Trust me as somebody who is I'm not Democrat. I am not Republican. I'm not either or. I'm not, I don't know exactly what I am. I'm, you know, plain and simple. I'm very upfront with you guys, very honest with you guys. I agree with some things on both sides. I agree with things in the middle. Um, I don't understand certain things. I don't understand, understand the massive push for the transgender community. That will never make sense to me. I fully understand gay and lesbian. I fully believe you were born that way. I understand wanting to help people who are in need of help, but I don't understand putting American citizens on the back burner in order to help other people. It will never make sense to me putting our country second instead of first. If we can't put our people first, how are we expected to help other people? We will crumble because of what we do helping other people. So the Biden administration, they are giving another $45 million to California programs that help migrants who have crossed the southern border. The money is part of a $300 million national effort announced on Friday by FEMA, the Federal Emer Emergency Management Agency. Now, most of the California funding uh, will be split between San Diego County and the Catholic Charities Diocese of San Diego. Okay, more than six million goes to Riverside County. Here's, here's, here's my question. I have so many questions. It's absolutely ridiculous how many questions I have. And I wish I had answers to everything. Y'all know I don't. I feel like a lot of y'all and I are in the same boat where 
we have all these questions. We don't understand the things that are going on within our own country and the world itself. I mean, the world, everything has kind of gone to hell in a handbasket the last few years, right? But there's so many questions. And for me, this is a way to talk it out, y'all. You know, you comment here in the live stream, comment in the comments when this is done. But this is a way for us to have a conversation on what is happening because we need like-minded people to talk with. Where I live now, um, because I moved here a couple years ago, I don't have a ton of people around me that I have conversations with. I rely on you guys to have my, my in-depth talks with, um, not that superficial, you know, how's the weather, how's your mama and them, which is, I mean, it's still good stuff, but none of that superficial crap. I want to have that, that deep talk of how do you feel about what is happening to you and your family and your country and your children and your 401k, your pension plans, your social security. Like I want to have these conversations, right? And the conversation today, right this second, before we move on to the next one, is the fact that all of our money, because this is tax money, this is tax dollars that are going towards all of these things, are being given away to people who can't even take the time to do things the correct way, to come into this country the correct way. People want to say to me all the time, oh my God, you're such a racist because, you know, how do you think you got here? Everybody's an immigrant. No shit, Sherlock. I fully understand that. But I also understand that there are plenty plenty of people who have done things the correct way, who have gone through the correct channels, who have taken the test, who have spent the time, who unfortunately have spent the money because of course, according, uh, becoming a citizen isn't free, right? Everything costs money. But I have an issue with the people who don't see the difference between coming here illegally and doing things the correct way. You want to break a law, that's on you. Why should I have to pay for the fact that you decided to break a law? Why does our country allow illegal immigrants to break laws? But heaven forbid I do 50 in a 35, I'm going to get a ticket because I broke a law and I'm expected to pay that ticket. The, the unevenness of it all to me is where the problem comes in. And the people who want to say, you know, everybody should be treated fairly. Everybody should be treated, be treated equally, whatever. That sounds nice on paper, my dudes. But in reality, that's not the way life works at any point in time. If our country didn't have laws, this place would be like a Mad Max society, right? We do have laws. You and I, as American citizens, are expected to follow these laws to the mother. And, tea. and if we don't, we are hit with jail time, with subpoenas, with um, arrest warrants, with, uh, you know, fees and fines and whatever else. But if you want to come over the border illegally, cool, we'll just give you some money. It's not a big deal. Don't worry about our laws. You're not a citizen. Our laws don't apply to you. How is that? Okay. And that's where the questions come in for me. I have, I have a lots of Hispanic friends. I have friends who are technically, I, mm, let's rephrase this. I, I read a thing one day that says, quit calling everybody friends, call them work, work acquaintances, people you went to high school with, whatever else. Okay. I have a tendency to call everybody friends. So I have acquaintances throughout my many years in corporate America and till now who are either illegal who are here because they've gone through the correct channels to get a green card or a work visa. I have friends who are American citizens. I have friends who are of every single type, style, background, age, ethnicity, ethnicity um, sexual preference, whatever. I'm, I'm friends with and acquaintances with all kinds of people. But the problem is we as a society are... Let me see how to phrase this. Y'all know how I have a tendency to squirrel off. I start a thought and then I go off on a tangent. And I apologize ahead of time. But we are expected to be okay with everything that is happening at our southern border, northern border, eastern, western border, because you've got Haiti, you have China, you have Hispanics from different, different countries. And I don't know what's happening from Canada, but there's people coming in from Canada too. You have all these things happening at different borders. And because I have a problem with it, it doesn't make me racist. It, ha it makes me want people to follow the same rules that I am expected to follow. If I am expected to follow these rules that are set in place by our government, shouldn't everybody be expected to follow the same exact rules that are set in place by the government? If you want to break a rule or break a law, then you should have a consequence, just just like I would have a consequence, but it seems like the consequence for breaking the laws, according to the Biden administration, as long as you're not a American citizen is to get paid for it, to get, you know, a, a thumbs up for it and to get special treatment for it. 
What the absolute fuck is that about? Like, please, somebody explain it to me. So listen, an additional $341 million will be used to establish a competitive grant program and allocated before the end of the fiscal year of September 30th this year, um, the administration said it's less funding uh, than programs help migrants had hoped for. Wait, it's less funding than programs helping migrants had hoped for, representing an 18% cut from last year's $780 million total. Y'all, last year, my nose is just, last year, $780 million was given to migrants do you know what else happened last year? Do you know how many people, American citizens lost their homes because of all the shit that has transpired from 2020 to 2023? Do you know how many people have lost their jobs because they wouldn't take a jab and they need money in order to continue their livelihood? But no, 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 no. There's no help for you and me, my dudes. There is only help for people breaking the law and crossing a border illegally. And it makes absolutely no sense to me. California's overall share is $3 million higher than last year. Just so you know, San Diego's allotment rose by $10 million. So let's say last year they were allotted 10 million because I don't know what they got last year, but let's say San Diego last year was given $10 million for illegal immigrants. This year they're given 20. You know why? Because there's more people crossing our Southern borders this year than last year, more people coming in from China this year than last year. And we wouldn't want anybody here to feel unwanted, right? So of course we have to bend over backwards and give them all of our country's money so that they have a cell phone. They have a way to get to point A and point B. They have a place to stay. They have clothes on their back. They have free food. They have all this other stuff, but heaven forbid we take care of our fucking veterans who are living on streets and on corners with nothing to their name. Listen, this is why I shouldn't do this live after I've had two mimosas. And I knew it was a horrible idea when I started, but I said, you know what? Fuck it. It is what it is. Listen, it's hump day. And on hump day, anything can happen. So border nonprofits, including, including Jewish Family Service of San Diego, are hailing the increase as a win that's reflective of the recent uptick in migrant arrivals near the California border. That is not a win. I don't know why people don't understand. Let, let, let me, let me, let me try to figure out how to phrase this. You guys understand this and I understand this, but let's put it out there for newbies who are watching, who don't have any clue about how this stuff works. If you have Let's, let's think of what's that chair game where you go around the circle and then the music stops and you have to grab a chair and if you're the last one standing, you lost, but if you sat down, you win. What is that called? Um, musical chairs? That sounds right. So you have 10 chairs. You have 20 people. Here's the problem. Our government says, well, for those 10 chairs, you get nothing, but for those 10 people standing, we're going to give you everything. How the fuck does that make sense? And I apologize for the F-bombs, but y'all, when I'm heated, I can't help it. I have potty mouth. It is what it is. If you're not adult enough to deal with it, there's an exit button. So the problem is our government would rather, our government would rather give the people who don't deserve a goddamn thing, everything, and the people who have worked their entire lives for just a, just a shred, just a little baby shred of the American dream, give them nothing. If you look at the fact that we have our retiring age, okay, I don't know what, um, what, what uh, age groups that is. I'm going to say 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, right? Like everybody above 62, okay? Everybody above 62, trying to retire, trying to get out of the rat race, trying to leave the having to be a greeter at Walmart or trying to leave whatever job they've had forever, right? Trying to leave that and figuring out how they're going to survive with today's inflation and their social security, microscopic social security checks, how they're going to figure out how to keep their home, pay their bills, have their health insurance, pay, get groceries, take care of everything, still have money to buy their grandkids presents for birthday, Christmas, graduation, whatever. They are over here saving pennies, going without a breakfast, going without a lunch, going without a medicine because it, they only have this much money to live with. And yet over here, you have fucking Juan and Pedro and whatever else crossing a border, putting our people at risk because we have to make sure they don't drown in a river in Texas. You have them getting money the second they cross the border to make sure they have clean clothes, new Levi's or Wranglers or whatever on their back. They have a cell phone from T-Mobile or Cricket or whoever the fuck wants to 
give them whatever. And then a bus ticket from Greyhound to take them to New York or Chicago or wherever. You have them rolling in dough and you have our American citizens in their 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s trying to figure out how they are going to survive. It makes not a single bit of sense to me. Not a single bit of sense to me. Oh, y'all, I'm sorry. I get heated. <laughs> and actually, no, I'm not. I'm not sorry at all that I get heated. Um, I got to quit apologizing for things because I'm not actually sorry, but I feel like I'm supposed to apologize because not everybody's going, going to agree with me. But at the end of the day, it is what it is. So you have the Biden administration giving all of our money to people at borders that aren't, you know, American citizens. Then on top of that, you have um, an illegal immigrant or illegal migrant, because heaven forbid you call them what they are, an illegal migrant convicted of child rape, arrested after district court ignored the detainer request and let him out on a $5,000 bail. So this guy... This guy in Massachusetts from Brazil was charged with child rape and was arrested in Massachusetts, right? And a detainer request from U.S. Immigrations and Customs Enforcement, and they let him back out to the community. A child rape charge came with a $5,000 bond. I don't know if you guys remember this, but Trump did something along the lines of embellishing how much his property was worth. And he had to pay, what was it, $345 million as like a, I'm sorry. But this guy, this grown ass illegal man can rape a child and only pay $5,000 to get back out on the streets. Again, the way our country is going makes absolutely no sense to me. And I didn't want to make an angry video today. I planned on coming on here and we were going to be jolly and happy, but you know what? Shit takes a turn. So I have an issue again <laughs> with the fact that this is going to sound so incredibly wrong in every single way I, I say it. So it is what it is. I don't like calling it right. And I don't like calling it left. I like calling it smart and I like calling it stupid. How about that? So whether you're right or left, whatever, you're smart or you're stupid, those are the two things we're going to go with. And I don't care what side you're on, you're either smart or you are stupid. The stupid people out there are the ones who are saying that we should let, you know, children at the age of eight decide that they were born a girl, but they, they don't want to have a vagina. They want a penis now or vice versa. And we don't have to tell parents about it. And it's perfectly fine. Now, those same eight year olds who want to have a sex change can't buy cigarettes. They can't vote. They can't have a gun. They can't drink alcohol. They can't drive a car, but they know perfectly well what genitalia they should have attached to their body. But at the exact same time, they're trying to tell us that a grown person doing unimaginable, disgusting things that should technically end their life, but not have, uh, um, but instead they get a $5,000 bond to get out of jail to go back out and do it again. The same people who are okay with all of that are why our country is in this massive shithole that it's in. When you look back at, let's see, I'm 42. And I am literally just now in the last couple of years paying attention to what is going on in our country and in our world. Before that, I was oblivious. I'm not even going to lie. I was oblivious to everything because I didn't want to pay attention to it because I thought to myself, well, it doesn't affect me. I'm not that demographic. I'm a white woman. I'm perfectly fine. Nothing affects me. I mean, that's pretty much how it goes, right? Now, if I was a black female, I would look at things differently. If I was a black male, I'd look at things differently. If I was a gay male or female, I would look at things differently. That's pretty much how it goes. We all look at things based on how it affects us as a demographic. I mean, that's just the God's honest truth to it, right? There are things that are happening right now in my personal opinion, again, a lot of this is, I, I bring you facts and stuff, but a lot of this is my personal opinion and you do not have to agree with it. It's perfectly fine. Nobody is expected to agree with me hundred percent, right? But there are a lot of things going on when it comes to our country that I feel like are aimed at dividing people on a daily basis, that I feel like are aimed at making us feel bad for not agreeing with the things that media wants us to agree with. TikTok, the things that are on TikTok, the, a lot of shit that's on YouTube, a lot of stuff on Instagram and Facebook, social media, the news, the TV shows in general. Y'all, I started watching How to Get Away with Murder over Thanksgiving break, TV show, because I love 
Um, can't think of her name to save my life right now, but I love the main lady. Uh, well, in the show, her name is Annalise Keating. What the hell is her name in real life? I don't know. But I loved, I loved the show. And then out of nowhere, for some reason, it felt like every single episode was about gay sex and everything else. Now, for me, I, it is what it is. I understand that they want to have a representation for everything. Viola Davis. Thank you, Sarah. I understand that some people want a representation for everything. I do agree that it's not fair for me as a straight white woman to only want to see straight relationships. Gay people want to see themselves portrayed as well. Trust me, I fully understand it. But it seems like lately the push has been a little over the top, if you know what I mean. Like there's just, there's more of the trying to dissuade people from a traditional straight relationship and trying to convince people that in order to be relevant, in order to be cool, in order to be um, TikTok worthy, you need to either be gay or transgender or bisexual or non-binary or whatever the hell else is out there. And it, it, it's all about money and marketing at the end of the day. And I have a 14 and a half year old daughter. She goes to school with all different kinds of kids. There are kids in her class who I can't tell if they're gay. I can't tell if they're straight. I don't know if they're confused as hell. I don't know what's going on with these kids. And a lot of times it's because they go, well, you know, we watched this on TikTok. We read this book that, you know, TikTok suggested, or we watched this TV show that's on Netflix where it's all about, you know, gay couples and whatever else. And again, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I fully believe that your sexuality is determined at birth. Okay. I will, I will always stick by that. I fully believe your sexuality is determined at birth. However, I fully also believe that our media and everything else is pushing a sexuality for people to want to jump on the trend. All right. They want to be gay because it's the cool thing. They want to have the rainbow everything because it's the cool thing, because it gives them something fun to talk about. Those people, they're not gay. They're confused as hell. And because social media and everybody else is helping them stay confused. The whole point behind it, the truth behind what is happening. And I, people call me conspiracy theorists. People can call me stupid. People can call me ignorant. I don't give a shit what you call me. The thing is, I truly personally in my soul, in my core, believe that at this point in time, our, not just our government, but the people that be, the ones who really stand up above us all and pull the little strings, the little puppet strings, because it's not just our government. They're all working together, the WEF or WEF, whatever, who, whatever you want to call them. All those people are working together. And I fully believe that the whole entire purpose of all of this shit we see happening everywhere is to one, break down the family union, the, the man, the, 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 the husband, the wife, and the, the bearing of children, is to break down the people who want to work for a living and you know get their hands dirty, break a sweat, and make hard-earned money. I believe it's designed to make it so that we are so incredibly reliant upon um, technology and everything else that we are perfectly okay with in the end when we end up in 15 minute cities with no cars and we have to take a community bus every single place or we walk every single place uh, that, you know, the gay couples uh, are there. You know, you have guy, guy, girl, girl. You have transgender who obviously confused as hell. Nothing works there. I don't even know how to explain that. But you have less children being born because they need us to, um, they, how, how to phrase this? Oh, shit. Um, the easiest way to get what you want is to make people think that that's what they want, not what you want. I hope that makes sense to you guys. It's the most narcissistic, gaslighting, bullshit behavior there is. And our government, partakes in it daily. So if they say we've got way too many people in this country, way too many people on this planet, we can't keep up with it with, you know, the food, the water, the whatever else, instead of saying, Hey, we need y'all to go. Like, I think it was China. Was it China or Japan? 
I don't remember who used to do it. You can only have one kid per family. Instead of saying that, they convince you that you're gay. You don't need kids because a guy doing another dude in the butt, you're not going to procreate. It's not happening. And a woman with another woman, you know, playing the scissor fest, you're not going to have a kid. That's just what it is. So, and I know that's a graphic, sorry. Um, but the, the push for that at the end of the day equates to less children being born, less mouths that have to be fed, less people leaving that carbon footprint we're all so worried about right now. Um, I feel like our government is doing everything it can. And I, I will not be surprised if YouTube is like, ew, we're not putting this video out. Um, I feel like our government is doing everything that it can to convince us that we are making these decisions on the, the things that are happening to our own country. We want to sit here and go, the government, the government, the government, it's their fault, it's their fault. But at the end of the day, we're letting it happen because we're listening to them. We're listening to what they're saying without them saying it. And that's the problem. We are being fed this propaganda. What is it? Um, like a hip, hip, hypnosis? Is that what it is? Like hypnosis, where you look or you, you're, you're put to sleep and you listen and they're like, bark like a chicken or bark, bark like a chicken, Jesus. Bark like a dog, cluck like a chicken, whatever else that crap is, right? That's what it feels like. Hey, Miss Jackson, thank you very much. I appreciate you, man. Americans are being called. That's what it is. At the end of the day, that's what it is. You have, our country is just, it does not make sense to me. At the end of the day, from me thinking back to when I was eight, nine years old, riding a bike around my grandmother's neighborhood, watching her pick things out of her garden, watching, you know, Mary Tyler Moore show on TV and laughing. I loved laughing when I was little watching Price is Right with her and her stories, you know, the, um, the soap operas and whatnot, general hospital, young and restless as the world turns, whatever. I loved all those things as a child. And now when I turn on the TV, I don't want to watch anything because everything feels like it's designed to either make me feel bad that um, somebody was killed by a cop, make me feel bad that I don't agree with transgenders having weird strip shows and, and you know reading children's books to five-year-olds, make me feel bad that I don't agree with a six-year-old boy dressing like a girl and calling himself you know, Caitlin or whatever, make me feel bad that I don't agree with the fact that illegal immigrants are coming in and taking over jobs and money and everything else and um, squatting in houses and raping children and all these. I don't feel bad about not agreeing with these things. And that's, that's, I think at the end of the day is the problem. We are supposed to feel bad, you and I, that we don't agree with the the propaganda that is being pushed on us. We are now somehow, we are now the minority. We are now the minority because we don't agree with this uh, inclusivity, I guess is the right word. Um, and if we don't agree with it, then we are considered bad because we haven't been brainwashed to believe that all this other stuff is right and good. It's absolute horseshit in my opinion and it's it's ridiculous and I don't understand how we have come so far in such a short amount of time I swear when I was in my 20s and 30s it was not like this and now I am scared for what it'll be like when I'm in my 50s and 60s and everything else it, I, I see the way our country is going and I can't I can't help but be worried about the dumpster fire that is being created for the United States of America. That's, that's all I have on that. <laughs> Listen, I got a little, a little heated and a little off topic. I'm not sorry. I'm just saying, um, we're going to, we're going to switch gears here now just to calm myself down. And so that hopefully maybe, um, YouTube doesn't completely just take this video and throw it in the trash can. Miss Jackson, uh, we suffer from a fatherless nation. Oh, don't get me started on that one. Don't get me started on the fatherless nation in the sense of the men that are being put into jail for stupid, stupid things. And then children are growing up fatherless. Women are having to raise kids on their own. That's a whole nother topic. That's probably Patreon related because I cannot hold any part of my tongue for that one. Just so we're all fully aware. Um, 
Listen, we've talked a little bit about, I'm going to switch gears here. We're doing a full 180, just so you know. Um, we, we talked recently about the Francis Scott Key Bridge and the collapse, <laughs> collapse there and how the people who lost their lives and everything else. And we talked about force majeure. If you guys have seen these previous videos, talked about force majeure and how companies that were supposed to deliver to the port of Baltimore are now putting the extra delivery fees on the original people. So the owner of the ship in Baltimore bridge, which is the Dolly, which is a Singapore, no, 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 no. Korean owned ship that was headed for Singapore. Owner of ship and Baltimore bridge collapse asked cargo owners to help cover salvage costs. So in the very beginning, I need y'all to fully understand in the very beginning of this, when the Francis Scott key bridge was hit and collapsed due to this, in my opinion, intentional hit of the pillars in Baltimore, they said that the cargo, that all of those containers on that ship were empty. They said it was empty in the very, very beginning. And then suddenly now they're saying, no, some of those cargo containers were full because there's a lot of, of um, people talking about why are you sending completely empty cargo ships to Sri Lanka? So a lot of people talked about that, right? So now they're saying that there were things, stuff in these containers. And now the owners of the Dolly are asking cargo owners to help cover the salvage costs. So what they're saying is that um, the Singapore-based Grace Ocean Private LTD, they're doing what is known as like a maritime law, right? As a general average declaration, it allows a third party adjuster to determine what each stakeholder should contribute. This is according to a company spokesperson named Daryl Wilson. The requirement is often involved after maritime accidents so that the cost of saving a vessel or its cargo is shared among interested parties. In this case, it pertains to costs associated with the refloating the dally, which remains stuck with sections of the fallen bridge collapsed, uh, draped across its damaged bow. So that thing has been there since March 26th, literally almost a month in. They still have the bridge that's collapsed. They still have the boat stuck in the same place. They still have the same containers on there. They've been pulling a few off a day of these containers. They're hoping to get it reopened. The bridge will take forever and a day to, to rebuild. It's going to cost a shit ton of money, just so we're all fully aware. Biden wants the government to cover it, which is stupid beyond all belief. It's not the government's fault or your fault. Because when he says government, he means your tax dollars and my tax dollars. Not your fault or my fault that this Dolly ship hit this these pillars and collapsed this bridge in Baltimore and fucked up the entire port for everybody, right? But now the owner of the ship wants to say, hey, ooh, yeah, we don't want to pay for all this. So like for those of you who have stuff on our cargo, like on our ship, if you could just, you know, pay your portion, that'd be great because they don't have the money to cover the entire thing. So if these people can't pay to have, let me figure out how to phrase this. If the shareholders or the people who have their crap on the dolly can't pay to have it removed and the ship salvaged and whatever else, does that mean that the ship doesn't move? Does it mean that nothing happens? Does it mean that we're in like this weird limbo? Because money makes the world go around. Unfortunately, it's the way it works. If nobody's paying, nobody's working to, to fix anything. So how is this going to play out? That's my question. Because the Baltimore, they're not going to want the ship sitting there forever. They are literally holding up everything from all these other cargo ships, from the naval ships, from Coast Guards, everybody. And they're holding up everything from getting through this port. They're holding up the ability to rebuild the Francis Scott Key Bridge that um, Francis Scott Key Bridge that was demolished from this. And if the people don't have the right insurance, if they don't have enough money to pay for it, then everything is in like this weird limbo, right? So that's where we're at right now. You have the owners of this ship asking the people who had cargo on the ship to basically pay their way to get out of this predicament, which is absolutely stupid in my opinion. I saw this thing pop up. So the roaming prepper says, um, side note, thank you, roaming prepper, says Marxism required conflict. China used Rick V. Poor. Russia used uh, aristocrat v. people. USA slash EU, European um, nations, using race and religion. End result is the same. Now, I do agree with the race and religion being the push 
for division a lot of times. You remember when George Floyd issues happened, it was a lot about race. Kyle Rittenhouse, George Floyd, everything was race related. Either you were white or you were black. There was no gray in, in the middle. Religion, same thing. Either you are pro-Palestine or you're pro-Israel or you're pro-Hamas or you're, you know, whatever. You're pro-Jewish, you're pro-Christian, um, Baptist, What? It's always going to come back to religion. It's always going to come back to race. However, here's the thing I've always said in my life. If you are religious, then race does not count. Because if you are truly religious and everybody came from Adam and Eve, nobody's skin color should give any kind of bearing to anything else. But that's just my thought on that. Um, oh, who do we have? Patricia A. Welcome to the family. Welcome to um, part of the Scroll Tribe, ma'am. So where were we? Let me get back to this. I'm sorry. I'm like running on and on and I'm fully aware of that. Uh, da, 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 da. All right, well, I'm done with the dolly. I don't care anymore about the dolly. Let's move over to something. No, I closed it. Damn it. I had a whole tab and I just accidentally closed it out. Um, so Red Lobster is filing for bankruptcy. They're giving away too many free Cheddar Bay biscuits, just so you're all fully aware. Here's the thing. When these companies file for bankruptcy, it doesn't make them go out of business. It just helps them recirculate their money in a completely different way. It's basically like saying, I'm just not going to pay that credit card and move it over to the side and keep going. So if Red Lobster files for bankruptcy, nothing's going to change except for they didn't pay their, their debts, their bills. Who do you think ends up paying that at the end of the day? It, it goes at the end of the day to you and I because the government wants their money no matter who it comes from. And they're not going to take it from these big corporations who have money falling out their asses. They're going to take it from you and I, middle class people who work our hands to the bone, trying to you know, support our families and live the lives we want to live and everything else. So if Red Lobster does file for bankruptcy, guess who's not going to Red Lobster again? Me. I don't go there anyway. I only like their Cheddar Bay Biscuits. You can get those at Sam's Club now, so just FYI, you can make them at home. You don't need to go to Red Lobster for that shit anymore. You can just make them in your own oven, in case you were curious. Also, totally off topic, totally random, Costco, one of my favorite places in the world, only because um, I like when they give the, free, the freebie little tester or taster things out. They have eight companies that produce Costco's Kirkland brand products. Everybody thinks that I had somebody comment earlier today that Costco's rotisserie chicken is raised by Costco. <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's not. Those are Tyson shits. They just put a Costco label or a Kirkland label on it. Come on now. Everything is Tyson at the end of the day, whether it's in Aldi, whether it's in Winn-Dixie or Walmart or Publix or whatever else, it's all Tyson. It's all the same Shit, they're all full of the same chemicals and crap and the hormones and the whatnot, so whatever. But eight companies that produce Costco's Kirkland brand products, which was very interesting to me. If you get Kirkland brand coffee, th this is funny to me, I, I need to put this out there really interestingly. A lot of people want to boycott Starbucks because they said they don't like support the troops or whatever. I don't know, I'm 100% I'm honest. I don't know, the, the Starbucks I go to, I am in an area with numerous Air Force bases around me and every single Starbucks that I've been to, they support the Air Force bases like nobody's business. Like there's a ton of different things to help support the bases, whether it's Eglin, whether it's Tyndall, whether it's, I don't remember the other one that's kind of sort of near here. Um, but if you go to Costco and you buy Kirkland brand coffee, that's Costco. Just saying, so you know, Costco makes Kirkland brand for, um, uh, no. Starbucks makes Kirkland brand for Costco. I'm dyslexic today. Just so you're all fully aware, if you're sitting there drinking your Kirkland brand coffee and pissing on Starbucks, you're technically drinking Starbucks. You just happen to have a different name on the label. Another one, um, Keurig also supplies for Costco Kirkland brands. If you're buying Kirkland brand K-Cups, that's Keurig at the same time. We have a tendency to forget that there's really only like eight to 10 companies that do everything, everything under the sun. Oh, Jackie, what? Hold on. I'm oh, wait one second. Jackie, what did you say? Show chat. I'm trying to keep up with everything. Jackie Stone, keep doing you, boo. Love it. Ma'am, I appreciate the shit out of you. Thank you so much. I don't know how to do anything but me. I'm not even going to lie. I, there are so many ways I could be a bigger channel and just blow up, but I'd have to be fake as shit and lie and say things I don't agree with. So 
unfortunately that's not going to happen. I don't ever expect to hit a million subs. I don't expect to be the top anything on YouTube because I refuse to kiss anybody's ass in order to make my way to the top. But anyways, let's go back <laughs> to what we're talking about with um, Costco. Oh yeah. So eight to 10 companies own and run every single thing you have. It's, it's an umbrella corp. So you have this massive one up here and they have all these little ones who have all these little ones who have all these little ones. And at the end of the day, when people are like, oh, I'm boycotting this. Oh, boo boo. You don't understand. In order to boycott that, you got to boycott all the way up to that top umbrella. And a boycotting this little bitty bitch over here don't matter. If you're not boycotting all of it, you know what I mean? They're not hurting. So I know we say, you know, boycott this, boycott that. But at the end of the day, boycotting these companies, in my opinion, these smaller companies only hurts the employees who rely on that paycheck in order to make their mortgage, make their rent, pay for their insurance and whatever else. Um, another thing, Diamond Pet Foods. I don't know if you guys have heard of Diamond Pet Foods, but Diamond Pet Foods, it says they use a blend of grains, vegetables and meat proteins to provide well-rounded nutrition for pets. Grains and pets is not a good thing, just so we're all fully aware. So well-rounded, mm, don't really know how I feel about that. But if you buy Kirkland brand dog food and cat food, it's not Kirkland brand. It's Diamond Pet Foods relabeled as Kirkland, just so you know. Ocean Spray, if you get like the craisins and stuff, Ocean Spray also makes Kirkland brand products. If you're buying um, Kirkland Signature label, uses ocean spray to make their cranberries and whatever else. These are just interesting things I think people should know about. Kirkland brand diapers, that's Huggies. My dudes, just so you know, you're putting Huggies on your baby's butt. Also, if you're buying Kirkland brand batteries, Duracell. Is Duracell the one with the bunny? Keeps on going. No, that's Energizer. Energizer bunny. Energizer is the bunny one. So Kirkland brand batteries are actually Duracell. So when you're in, Kir in uh, Costco and you see Kirkland brand batteries here and Duracell batteries here and Duracell is $2 more, buy the Kirkland. It's the same damn company, just a different label. And it makes you feel better that you haven't given money to the big dogs, that you've given it to Kirkland and said, it's the same damn battery. It's just $2 cheaper. Same thing at, at Walmart. If you buy the Walmart Great Value brand, a lot of times those those green beans, those are still Green Giant. They're still, you know, if you're buying the fruit, the, the Great Value fruit, it's still Del Monte. You're just giving your money to a different version of the same big corporation at the end of the day. And if you can save 20 cents or a dollar or two by giving it to the lower name brand, do it. At the end of the day, having money in your pocket is more important than buying the name brand of anything. I went to find new gym shoes yesterday. My gym shoes are atrocious and this is disgusting and I'm fully aware how gross this is and I don't care. I hate socks. They feel like toe prisons. I do not wear socks with my sneakers. I don't care. I spray them and I clean them and my feet are always clean and I keep my sneakers clean, but I friggin' hate socks. So after like a year of wearing sneakers, I need a new pair. So yesterday we went to Nike. Everything sucked. It was expensive or it was ugly. We went to Adidas. It was expensive or it was ugly. I went to Under Armour, expensive or ugly. I went to New Balance, less expensive, less ugly. So I ended up buying some new sneakers yesterday for myself. At the end of the day, if they'd had a Payless shoe source, I would have bought stuff at Payless. If I had thought to go to Walmart, I could have bought some Walmart sneakers. Uh, Shaq has his own stuff there. At the, end, the, the, the name brand doesn't matter. Do I have Lou Boutons or Louis Batons or whatever the hell you're supposed to call it, those red bottom shoes? No, no, I'm not spending a thousand dollars on a pair of heels just to say I have red bottoms. I will paint them bitches if I need to. I will go to Walmart, buy some $10 heels, get some red paint, paint the bottoms and pretend that I'm a Kardashian. I don't care. You have to keep money in your pockets. Do not think that you need to keep up with the Jones or anybody else. Keep money in your pockets. Buy Kirkland brand is the same damn thing as buying Ocean Spray or Duracell or whatever else we said. Don't spend extra money if you don't have to spend extra money. So that's all I've got. Technically, we could do this for hours, y'all. I have always got something to say, just so you know. I am a nonstop motor mouth. But for now, what the hell? Hold on. Billionaire Warren Buffett recently cut this stock from Berkshire Hathaway's portfolio. It just dropped 53% in one day. What is this? Hold on. Now I'm curious. 
Globe Life stock plummeted more than 53% in a single day last week after short seller Fuzzy Panda Research, that's a dumb name, accused the life insurance company of fraud. Hey, if you have Globe Life as your life insurance, maybe contemplate jumping ship and going somewhere else. The claims piled onto the already struggling stock, which had previously been a longtime holding of Warren Buffett's conglomerate Berkshire Hathaway. Mm. See, the random things that I find on the internet. Look, I have my life insurance with State Farm. Jake from State Farm. Yeah, I have life insurance with State, with State Farm. I've had it for years upon years upon years because it's better to have it than not have it in, in case anything happens. But I don't think I would want it with Globe Life right now if it's uh, plummeted 53%. That means your money is down the crapper, my dudes. So... Listen, I love y'all. Thanks for hanging out with me on a random Wednesday for my beginning rant and tirade, if you will, um, into the more less ranty tirade stuff. I appreciate you immensely. Um, I didn't get to read all of the comments, and I'm sorry for that. They let it live. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the, the, the guy who killed Lake and Riley in Atlanta. I have a lot of thoughts on that. We've talked about it numerous times, but we're not going to get into that now. I'm going to let you guys go. Um, oh, that's so cute. I'm surprised YouTube still allows transphobic bigots on their platform. Oh, deuces. You're stupid. Remove. Look, see how I can do that? I can just hide user from channels real fast. It's so much fun for me. I hope you guys have a fabulous rest of your hump day, my dudes. I will be on... Squirrel Tribe 2.0 a little bit later, live stream. We need to talk about over there what's happening with YouTube because there's some massive changes that are happening. If you guys want to be part of that, feel free. Squirrel Tribe 2.0. If not, no harm, no foul. It's a completely different vibe than this one most of the time. But I feel like today it's going to be along the same lines. I'm going to be a little irked and a little irritated. And we're going to have a very honest conversation about YouTube and what they are doing to shut people up, basically. Catitude says what time? Let's see probably because I got to get the kid from school, then get back over here. So probably I'm going to say 4.30, you know what, 5 o'clock, 5 o'clock live stream, make life simple, 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. So 6 Eastern, let's see if I do this right, 6 Eastern, because I'm Central Standard. For those of you, and I'm going to sound like an asshole when I say it, for those of you who think all of Florida is Eastern Standard Time, that's fully inaccurate. I am Central Standard Time because I am I am in the um, panhandle. I am closer to Alabama than anything. So uh, Central Standard Time for me. Uh, so if that's 5 o'clock Central Standard, that's 4 o'clock Mountain Time, 3 o'clock Pacific. I think that's how it goes. I'm trying to remember all the different time zones. Um, so yeah, 5 Central Standard Time on Squirrel Tribe 2.0 if you guys want to be part of it. To comment, you must be a subscriber. It makes my life a little bit easier and it um, kind of gives an incentive to subscribe to the channel. So there's that. Uh, again, there are links in the description of this channel for Patreon if you guys want to support the channel, for ButcherBox if you guys want to save $50 off of some organic pasture-raised chicken and grass-fed, grass-finished beef. And for Hervé Lucindy, which is an organic perfume, which does not rely on alcohols, so it doesn't give you a massive raging headache, which is amazing. And there's some other stuff in there too if you guys want to check it out. But until the next one, I love you all Im immensely. Thank you for hanging out here. I appreciate you, and I will see you on the next one. Bye, guys. I can hit end. Bye.